to uh, invite uh, Professor Sono uh, Suri. Uh, she's from um, University of Florida, uh, USA. So she was talking about keratoplasty for coronary octavius. Please set your talk. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to speak here today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit uh, different uh, today. Um, we've talked about what the what the standard of care is now, which is cross-linking. Uh, but then in some patients, as you can see with the higher order aberrations, or they have poor visual acuity or scarring, um, they may need to go to keratoplasty. I have no disclosures. And so how do you decide what kind of keratoplasty to do? And I look at it um, a little bit um, depending on the location of the ectasia, what I would do for them if they have central ectasia versus peripheral ectasia. And then if it's central, is it post-LASIK or post-keratoconus? Um, and then whether the decimase is mostly intact or, or if it is not intact or scarred. And so we know that you know, in the good old days, what we used to do for keratoconus was a full thickness corneal transplant. And now, of course, we know that the way to do this, if possible, if you have an endothelium that's intact, is to do a DALC or a deep lamellar anterior keratoplasty, whether it's a big bubble or whether you do a lamellar dissection. Uh, but leaving the endothelium has several advantages. Uh, less risk of re rejection, the patients don't need re recurrent transplants, and if you do, you can just pull off the old transplant and put a new one, and intraoperatively, you don't have to worry about things like expulsive hemorrhage, positive pressure, but they are difficult to do, as you can see, take more time, um, and then require a, an intact endothelial um, function and location, though you can do some deep dissections even if the endothelium is not perfectly intact. Um, but you can see how this leaves that uh, the decimase membrane to protect the inside of the eye. You suture it up, and now you can do a surgery that's, um, that's much safer. Uh, but even if you have an endothelium that's not completely intact, or you cannot do a DOLF for some reason, or there's scarring on the endothelium, you don't always have to do a full thickness regular transplant. Um, so you can do like a top hat transplant. The advantage of the top hat is that you there's multiple advantages. One is that you replace more of this corneal surface, so you make it a lot stronger, uh, and that way you can prevent it from the ectasia from progressing. You only replace a small amount of endothelium, so the amount of risk of rejection goes down. And the third thing is because you have almost a triplanar incision, now you've got nice area Instead of having only 500 microns where the two corneas are attached and it's vertical, now you have a triplanar and you have about two millimeters or 1.5 millimeters where the corneas are opposed to each other and there's a flap that can cause the corneas to close. So less risk if they get hit in the eye down the road. And here you can see a patient that has had this sort of mushroom shaped transplant. And uh, this is the outer edge and this is the inner edge. And you can see there's this whole area, about a millimeter, where the two corneas are opposed with the mushroom um, trans, uh, configuration. But what do you do about trans, uh, corneas that are ectatic in the periphery? So here the cornea in the center is relatively clear, it's healthy, and you can see there's a sort of a beer belly um, uh, configuration where the central cornea is healthy, it's normal, uh, but you have this very, very thin area at the bottom. You don't want this patient to sneeze because they could pop their cornea open. But if you do a large central transplant and it rejects, now the problem is that you have a rejected cornea, their vision is worse than it was before you did the transplant. Um, you're also replacing all their endothelial cells. So in patients that have purely peripheral transplants, I'd like to do a crescent transplant, and this is a video that sort of shows how you do it. And so you measure the cornea, the part of the cornea that's thinned. Now this is um, what I'm showing is in a patient who had a perforation from terians. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but it's the same process. Instead of doing it inferiorly, you're doing it superiorly. But think about it, this as the patient that we just saw with the inferior ectasia. And we're um, marking out, so you take a smaller diameter tr uh, tree find and you mark the outer layer. And I usually use something that's similar to a little bit smaller than the diameter of the cornea itself. And then you take a much larger tree find and you make the inner opening. And this is what we had presented in our paper. And so now you've got this nice crescentic shape that incorporates the whole thinned area. And then you cut it out and you get this little 
crescent shape that you've removed from the eye. And then you do the same, you take the same two tree finds and you take the donor cornea, you punch out the smaller tree find, the smaller diameter tree find, and then the larger diameter tree find. You want to measure this to make sure it's the same depth as what you took off, or maybe a little bit larger. And then you put it on the cornea and you want to suture it so that the sutures are sort of opposite to each other and lays it down really, really well. And then um, this is the patient that you saw earlier with the little beer belly, with the pellucid marginal degeneration. And now you can see how we've got this cornea that's laid out, it's compressed the corneal curvature. The advantage is that if this cornea rejects and the endothelial cells are all dead, there's enough of endothelial cells in the patient's own cornea that can replace this replaced cornea and now you don't have to worry about a rejection down the road. So less risk of ca causing corneal decompensation because the patient has their own endothelial cells. Uh, post LASIK ectasia, you can do corneal transplants, regular corneal transplants, but one of the things that's really easy to do because you do have a flap is to remove that flap and then you can take a cornea from the, the eye bank that's the cap of the DSAC tissue and you can amputate the LASIK flap and put the new cornea on that gives you a nice healthy Bowman's layer and thick cornea to compress and you can suture it really tight to make the cornea uh, compressed and get visual uh, rehabilitation in addition to having the, eye, uh, the, the structure of the eye restored. So some final thoughts, uh, cross-linking has changed the landscape. I used to do a lot of corneal transplants, full thickness corneal transplants when I started training to do uh, corneal transplants and, and now we've changed to having very few keratoconic or ectatic patients. Uh, more of the, the post-LASIK ectasias probably than, than even keratoconus. And you've got various surgical options and you wanna match the procedure to the type of ectasia. Uh, thank you and thank you for inviting me. I've had a wonderful time. Thank you. So now uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful presentation. So is there any uh, comment or uh, question from the audience? Okay. Dr. Yangish, yes. Thank you for your great talk. So Thank you. <laughs> you can come. I perform a uh, crescent-shaped keratectomy, not uh, transplanting uh, crescent-shaped grafts. So do you have any uh, experience on that? So. Uh, yeah, I do several of these. So this is our patient. So anytime I have a patient with pellucid marginal degeneration yeah, or Terrian's uh, degeneration, I always prefer to do a crescent transplant. They do really well and they never reject or they very seldom reject. If they reject, the endothelium gets replaced. So I don't have to worry about these patients long term. Same thing with, you know, here we see a lot of keratitis. I do the same in, in Florida. And so I like to do some uh, baby transplants rather than large transplants. If I can take out, especially for fungal ulcers, if you can just shell out that part, you don't have to worry about rejections down the road. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my question is that uh, uh, just cutting the uh, thin area of the pellucid marginal coronal degeneration, not implant, uh, transplanting the graft, graft, just shortening of the... Oh, just taking uh, it off uh, and uh, suturing it, yes. Yeah. And that's another mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. Um, is to just uh, excise that area and then you can uh, yeah. suture the two ends together. Sometimes if it's extensive amount of thinning, it's very hard to bring those two ends together to each other. And in this patient, there was so much stretching that we could not bring the two cornea edges together. So we did the, uh, the crescent transplant. Now you do do the crescent transplant, same size, not bigger, and that will bring that cornea down a little bit and shorten it a little bit, but that's a great question. Oh, thank you. So you decide whether you select uh, transplant or just shortening. It yes, and we take not very good quality transplant, mm -hmm. and we can do a lamellar dissection there so that we don't need to waste a lot of en good endothelial cells. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, um, I think that's the end of our, our session. So thank you all for coming, um, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for uh, so for the audience uh, for coming our session. Thank you very much.